Are you there? Are you there? Just trying to find out what's going on, people. For those of you wondering, uh, oh, there we go. Now we're live. Look at that, we're live. Uh, perfect. Well, apart from a little weirdness in technology, don't worry, you haven't missed anything because, uh, well, because you haven't, because I haven't done anything yet. So, uh, welcome and hello. Uh, I hope you are all well. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you're all uh, safe and healthy uh, and you have been continuing to take pictures uh, and be creative uh, and, uh, and, yeah, basically keeping yourself sane with photography. That's the goal, I think. So today we have got one of the most exciting uh, of these workshops from my perspective because it is, um, well, it's a whole different world that we're stepping in today. Wherever you happen to be, uh, we're going to transport you into a different realm. I'm going to show you how to take pictures that are otherworldly, uh, that, well, uh, it looks like you're basically taking pictures of another planet and it all involves soap bubbles and you can do it on a tiny little scale in a little bit of space exactly like I'm doing here in my kitchen. I don't have a huge amount of space uh, as you've seen uh, but uh, it's plenty enough for, um, for, for this soap bubble photography. Oh look, we've got some comments. Hello, Lena. Uh, hello, thank you for joining us again. Lena, one of our regulars, has been in for, I think you've been in for all of them so thank you very much. I hope you've uh, learned a few bits and pieces. So today is all about soap bubbles, and the great news is that it is really, actually very simple. Uh, it, it does involve a macro lens and it involves some lighting, but the technique itself uh, is really easy. Making soap bubbles is super simple. And even better, uh, if you've got children, uh, then this is just the perfect thing for you to do uh, because it gives you the opportunity to, to make some soap bubble formula that they can go and play with as well. Uh, so, uh, a winner all round, frankly. Right, so let me give you a little tour of what we've got going on here today. Uh, so, you can see me, not super exciting. Um, we don't really need to worry about that. Now, we do have, uh, here is uh, a blackboard uh, and, in fact, a soap bubble that you can see right here. Let's, let's pop that one. There we go. Uh, and then, to make sure that you can see all angles. Oh, not that. There we go. Uh, I have got... Uh, another view for you here, uh, which is where you can see uh, you can see what's going on from the alternate side because I'm probably going to put, well you probably can't see it here, but there's a light here. Uh, you can see a whole bundle of cables here. That's what makes all of this work, but don't, don't worry about that. That's it's just cable mess, nothing to do with you guys. Uh, and uh, I've also got a continuous light uh, behind me, which you probably can't see, but it's the thing that's here. Uh, that's here, the thing on this stand. Uh, in fact, you can probably see it better when I'm here uh, as the focus appears. There we go. Uh, this light here will be using this as well. Okay, so soap bubble photography. Uh, sounds a bit strange. Um, probably is a bit strange, uh, but as I say, fundamentally really, really simple. You need a couple of things. Uh, so I'm going to show you, uh, show you what you need. Uh, number one, Ideally, you need, uh, if I can just unwrap this here, let's just unplug this, there we go. Uh, you need some kind of macro lens, okay? Uh, whatever macro lens you've got will do. Something with a longer focal length is ideal, so 100mm, 90mm, even a 180mm works really, really well because we are only looking at tiny little sections and if you've got a longer focal length lens, you can give yourself a little bit more working distance. So, in other words, you can be a bit further away which makes getting into blowing the bubbles a little bit easier. You'll see that it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, that's all part of the fun. That's all part of the fun for you guys watching me try to do this live as well. What else do we need? Well, we need some soap bubble mixture. So this is my soap bubble mixture now. This is made out of, um, it's, well, it's really easy. Um, it's washing up liquid. Uh, it's water, obviously. Uh, and then there's something that helps bind it together that makes the bubbles a little bit stronger. 
Uh, and the reason we want to make them a little bit stronger is so that they last a little bit longer. Because otherwise, if you blow a bubble and it disappears in two seconds, you'll spend an evening being incredibly frustrated, uh, what, blowing these bubbles, watching them disappear, and not actually getting any pictures. So to do that, there are a variety of things that you can use. I'm using glycerin, um, but you could also use um, vegetable oil or olive oil. Any kind of oily substance like that is going to help stick it together, uh, going to help bind it. Beyond that, uh, we need some lighting, uh, ideally quite a large light source, hence why uh, I've got this one here, uh, but I've also got, you can kind of see the corner of it here, uh, this is a large octobox, uh, this is going to be, we'll, we'll use both actually because I want to show you the difference between um, continuous light like this one uh, and flashlight like this one because they do require obviously different settings uh, and probably flash is slightly easier. So it's probably a good time to talk about the lighting. The, the fundamental thing that you, fundamental, there are two fundamental things that you need for the light. It needs to be really quite bright, so it's got to be very powerful, uh, but it also needs to be quite large. Because if your light source is too small, you end up with little hot spots on top of your bubble, and that doesn't work very well. What you're looking for is to create a lovely diffuse dome of light over the top of the bubble. Now once we've, uh, let me come over here, uh, once we have got our, um, once we've got our bubble mixture sorted and we have got uh, our, um, our, our camera sorted, we've got our macro lens and we know what we're doing with lighting, uh, we actually just need to um, blow some bubbles. So I've put this, you'll notice, on a black background. This is not essential, uh, but it does help stop too much light bouncing back up, uh, which can then remove some of the contrast. What you may have seen, uh, possibly if I show you this one, uh, there's a black towel hanging here. If you've got some black cloth, uh, if you have got, um, uh, I don't know, um, black curtains, a black towel, anything dark uh, that you can put against the background or around your light to help shield from any light, uh, any stray light coming in. Uh, that is going to be uh, that's going to be a benefit. That's going to help because if you've got too much stray light, again, it's going to reduce the contrast. Uh, it's going to make your pictures look a little bit washed out. Okay, so um, we've got macro lens. We've got lights. Uh, I'm tempted to start with flash um, because that's the one that's kind of in position uh, and arguably is probably the easiest one to do um, because more people are likely to be able to make a large light source with flash. Now you'll see, um, or you might be able to see, you should see in a moment, that I've got quite a large light source. This is a very large octobox. It's an 80 centimeter octobox, which gives me that large wrap of light. Um, and there are other ways of making a large light source. So you could try bouncing the light off a ceiling, but you'll probably find you'll pick up a lot of reflections of everything else that's going on. And that's something we don't want. We don't want reflections of anything else around the bubble. Um, if you don't have a big softbox or a big octobox, you could use a diffuser panel. Or you could make a diffuser panel out of some nice fine white material. Uh, if you stretch that round a, a homemade frame to create, I don't know, a, a one meter by one meter square of soft light that you can fire a, um, a light through, Equally, if you have a diffuser, so um, I don't know, a, a, a Lastalite or a Photoflex diffuser, something that you can fire your lights through to make them appear as a larger light source. And then we need to get it actually quite close in uh, to our subject. Now, I've told you how to make the, uh, how to make the bubbles. Uh, so that was this with the, uh, with the, the washing up liquid uh, and the glycerin or oil and some water. Ideally, if you can make this and put it in a jar, leave it to sit overnight. Uh, it, it makes sure that everything is mixed up. Uh, you can use it straight away for sure, but if you, you know, put it in here and give it a bit of a shake and then just leave it to settle and mix over time, uh, you tend to get a, a better uh, set of bubbles. If you leave it too long though, it somehow seems to lose its potency or at least lose some of its color, possibly. Um, so maybe don't store it for months and months and months. Uh, just make a fresh batch, you know, a couple of days before you want to want to have a go at this again. Uh, then, once we've got it into a into a bowl, let me show you here. I've put it into a bowl. A, a dark bowl is ideal. This bowl has actually got some patterning in it. 
uh, but it is quite dark, it's not the end of the world. Um, in an ideal, ideal world, I'd have a matte black bowl, uh, which would mean that no light is going to bounce back up underneath. It's not going to take any of the reflections underneath the bottom of the bubble. Um, but as I say, uh, you know, a small bowl like this uh, will work just as well. Uh, and then we need a straw. Now, this might not look like a straw, and that's because it's not. Uh, I'm try to be quite environmentally friendly in, in the house and we don't have any straws, not even any of the paper ones. So what I have uh, is uh, this old ballpoint pen, biro pen, uh, that I took the biro out of, the biro bit, the righty bit out of it, uh, and I'm left with uh, a nice hollow tube, effectively a straw, you see? Uh, and so I can use this to, to blow my bubbles. So uh, let's give you a quick demonstration of that. Now you need to be quite careful you don't want to blow too hard. Oh, oh, see, that's what happens when you blow too hard. And also when you get a little bit greedy as well. There we go, look at that. So now we have a bubble, uh, but it doesn't really look like much. It's just a bubble on um, on a bowl. So I can understand if you're a little bit confused as to why this may be super interesting uh, and how we're going to make great pictures. Uh, but as I say, it's all down to the lens and the lighting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this camera angle to give you a slightly wider view uh, of what's happening uh, so that you can see a little bit more uh, so, where are we? Right, if I give you this view, uh, you now have just a bit wider view of, of everything that's happening uh, in, the, in terms of the light. So we've got the light up here. Um, you'll note that there's some stuff going on over here. There's my computer in the background, which is how you're going to see uh, the pictures that I take, because they're going to pop up on screen, he says, hopefully. Uh, and obviously, this is where I can... Uh, answer your questions here if you're wondering why there's an iPad here. Uh, there's also, as you can see, a little bit of tissue here because um, this can get quite messy. Bubbles pop and you can knock jars over and water can go everywhere. So just a little bit of kitchen roll uh, just helps keep everything a little bit tidier. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to bring in my camera and we're going to get that set first. Now I do just need to, uh, I do just need to connect uh, a uh, connect a cable. Uh, so let's figure out where this needs to be. Uh, right, where are we? Now what I'm looking to do is is get in really nice and close to this bubble. Uh, because when I'm in nice and close, I can concentrate on just a small section of it. And that does actually make life a little bit easier in terms of the lighting. So I know that I need to be in uh, probably about here. Uh, and then there'll be um, a little bit of uh, fine adjustment afterwards. Right, so one tip with your camera. Um, it's quite a good idea if you're on a camera that can give you uh, an exposure display, uh, to make sure that it's set to not uh, give you what the exposure looks like. What you want uh, is some kind of, you, you just want to be able to see rather than trying to figure out uh, what's going on because uh, with your exposure, because your exposure should be basically entirely black. Uh, right, where are we? Now it can be a little bit challenging to focus, uh, so it takes a little bit of practice. Um, and manual focus is usually best for this. Uh, it does make life that little bit easier. So, right, let's connect this up. Let's hope that my, uh, my computer has got itself all sorted. Let me just check over here, there we go. Uh, it has indeed started. And that means I will be able to show you pictures as I take them. Now, step one 
in terms of the exposure, we don't want any of the ambient light to be included in this picture. We absolutely don't. What we're looking for uh, is for to be, um, well, fundamentally, uh, what we're looking for is for uh, to be all entirely dark, actually. Dark picture. Um, and by making a dark picture, uh, we, we get the ability, let me change cameras here. Um, in fact, let me show you what this looks like. So I'm going to give you this view here. You can see, uh, uh, you can see my camera settings. This makes life a little bit easier for you. So you've now got my, uh, you've now got my camera settings. And as you can see, I'm at 200th of a second. I'm at F16 at ISO 100. And the goal uh, is that this should be entirely black. I don't want to see anything in this picture. So I'm gonna, oh, maybe not with flash. Uh, here we go, let's take this picture. It should be, hopefully, entirely black. There we go. Look at that, we have a, uh, a black picture. Never have I been so happy uh, to see an entirely black picture as I am right now, um, because an entirely black picture uh, means that uh, I've got my settings correct. And now it's just a question of bringing some light in. So what I am going to do, uh, I am going to, uh, 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 what I'm going to do, um, is I am going to bring in my lighting. Now I've just noticed a comment, someone said, did it stop? It would appear that we're having a bit of a slow internet uh, and I am not entirely sure how or why because I still have good connection here uh, and it seems to think that it's running very slowly. Um, now I'm not overly sure why that is. Um, right, oh, and there we go. That's what happens with, uh, with soap bubbles. Look at that, you can easily knock over, uh, knock over your bowl. Uh, look at that, people. Uh, right, uh, so let me have a look uh, and uh, see what's going on here. Uh, I am going to, I'm just gonna take one moment. Let me come back here. I'm just gonna take one moment uh, to try and figure out why we're losing connection because something is not right. We're doing nothing different to any time in the past, uh, but right now uh, we've got um, basically, um, it seems very, very limited connection. Uh, right, let's have, a, let's have a peek. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna give you this view again because this is nice and simple uh, and see whether there's something going on. Look at this, you can, you can see all of my mess right here. Uh, where are we? Oh, look, I've, I've made an entire mess. Now you could, this just proves that it's soap, right? Because it's all soapy bubbly right now. Uh, and this is obviously why you make uh, a lot more uh, than you normally think you need for the size of the bubble that you've got, or sorry, for the size of the bowl that you've got, um, because accidents can happen. Uh, look at that, right. I'm going to have to refill my bowl um, because I just want to clean this off uh, to make sure that we have as clean a work surface uh, as we can get in the time. There we go, let's get rid of the bubbles. All sorted, lovely. Uh, right, okay. So we're putting, uh, we're putting our, our soap mixture in here. Uh, we've got our lens sorted. There we go. Now we've got some soap in here. Uh, and all should now be well. We, we should be up and running once more, it would seem. Uh, I hope I've managed to solve this problem as we've gone, uh, or maybe it has, uh, maybe it's solved itself. We still appear to be online. Um, it still appears to be, data still seems to be flowing, so I'm not quite sure where the hold up is because it's, it's certainly not this end. Right, let's have a little look um, and uh, we are going to blow ourselves uh, a, a bubble, so to speak. Right. Mm. 
Ah, too greedy, too greedy. Now, in an ideal world, you don't want any other bubbles. This is the most frustrating part of bubble photography, is, uh, is, is trying to blow your bubbles without having uh, too many others around, because they can create internal reflections. I was just, just about to stop as well, honestly. I do hope when you give this a go that, uh, that this, is, this is annoying for you. Um, it's actually, as I say, it's, it's super simple. Uh, and yet this is the hardest part, actually blowing a bubble, which you'd never have thought blowing a bubble would be that challenging. Okay, we're going we're gonna to give that bubble a go because... Uh, because that bubble, uh, it's it's big enough for for what I'm trying to show you. Just for the first one, and then we'll then we'll try and get a little bit more creative as we go. Uh, right, where are we? Well, a bit more creative. We'll try and get a better bubble uh, fundamentally. Right, so I'm going to get in nice and close, uh, and I can already see that there are these incredible rainbow patterns going on in this bubble, but. What I want you to see, so you've already seen the, the, the black. Now, I've got the light on up here. Uh, I've turned my light on and it's going to fire. Uh, and what you're going to see, uh, if I give you this view here, you can see that we can see the bubble, but we can also see the reflection of the light above. And you can see that there's this all white background, which, uh, which is, not, uh, this is not super nice. It, you know, this is, this is a very dull, very mediocre picture, not, not anything particularly interesting at all. Uh, so this is where the lighting comes in, and this is why I say that you need a very large light source, because if you don't have a really big light source, then you end up with these kind of hot spots on top. So I am, I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna get my towel off of here because I need to put that round the back. Uh, and then I'm just gonna lower this light in very slowly until I can get it really close down uh, above, above my bubble. Now, what this does is it effectively makes the light source even bigger. So we have a large light source uh, and it makes it seem even bigger as, uh, as far as the subject is concerned. Uh, and then I'm gonna take the black towel or the black material, uh, whatever you've got, blackout material is great uh, and I am going to drape it around the back. It's basically going to give me a nice black background uh, and I'm going to pull it around the sides as well uh, and it's going to help cut out uh, any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, light from the sides. So what that looks like to the bubble underneath here um, is uh, it, lo it looks a bit like this. So let's, let's just adjust our framing slightly uh, and I'm going to try and find our point of focus. And hopefully now, we are starting to get a little bit closer. Well, we would be if I'd managed to find focus. Here we go. We're starting to get a little bit closer to what we're trying to create, that being this, this otherworldly picture. Now, this is where it does become trial and error because you've got to try and find uh, where the focus is and this is why we're using a narrow aperture as well. So f16 uh, is giving us uh, quite, a, quite a narrow aperture um, and it's giving us a, well, a, a reasonable amount of depth of field, but not, uh, obviously, because we're shooting macro, we don't have an infinite amount of depth of field. Um, and that's what makes this challenging, uh, is trying to get enough depth of field uh, for the shot that you're trying to create. Now, you could use... Let's try this. 
You could use something that will help you uh, find your focus point. Uh, so for example, here we go. Uh, for example, um, where are we? We're in here, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. We could take our pen like this uh, and we could position our pen somewhere about in the middle of, uh, of the frame of, of the bubble uh, and hopefully, if I can see the pen, there we go, if that's in about the right place, I can see where I'm focused. Am I too far? There we go. Now, one thing that's really quite difficult is it's eminently possible that you could be focused on the back of the bubble, the rear side of the bubble, because you're looking through, don't forget, a translucent surface. Uh, and you're therefore able to effectively focus through, um, you're able to focus through and see the back of it. Uh, now we've just had a question. Uh, Shashank, hello there. What material am I using for the black backdrop? In this case, it's just a black tan. It doesn't have to be anything super special. Um, it, it, you know, if you have proper blackout material, uh, it, it can be a little bit better, but really it doesn't make a lot of difference. As long as you don't have uh, a really bright light background, uh, as long as you've got, um, uh, as, as long as you've got, you know, something that's dark, you help the contrast stand out of your of your picture. So let me um, let's just make sure that we're making the most of this. Here we go. Right. So let me give you this view. So this is you can see that the blacks are really quite dark, but we do have this halo. Uh, I don't know if you can see that at your end, but there's a I can see there's a slight halo. Uh, over the top of the bubble. Now this is caused by the back of the bowl, uh, the, the rear side of that bowl, because it's not an entirely black bowl, uh, you will get that little bit of, uh, of, of light kickback underneath, uh, and that will then give you, uh, as I say, this, uh, this slightly, uh, well, Uh, it, it, it will give you this slight halo. Also, don't forget that because you've got, you know, a section of bubble, uh, and, and as I said, bubbles are indeed translucent, uh, you can, uh, it, it can become very uh, obvious for any kind of reflection. So cutting out reflections as much as you can uh, is very worth it. Now, I'm kind of struggling with the focus today. Uh, it's, it's proving a little bit challenging. This bubble actually doesn't have a huge amount of colour to it. Now, once a bubble is getting ready to pop, you'll tend to find that it sort of stops moving. Um, before then, it will have quite a little bit, quite a lot of movement to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to raise this up uh, and, oh no, I'm going to try and get underneath it, actually. Uh, now, this is where it all gets quite fun for you. Uh, I'm going to try and get under here um, and... Those of you that have been to any of the actual workshops, uh, the physical workshops at Exposure, um, will will know that I'm reasonably tall. At exposure um, will will know that I'm reasonably tall. That's not usually my forte, uh, but here we go. Right, let's let's see if we can't make this bubble uh, a little bit better. Look at that. I'm not being too greedy. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, it doesn't pop straight away because uh, that would be most frustrating. So uh, I've just kind of left it a little bit smaller than I think it could probably be. Uh, right, let's have a little, let's have a look at this. Here we go. We've got a, a few more colors coming in. Now, um, the color of the, um, uh, the, the color of the bubble you can't really affect. It doesn't matter if you use colored gels, um, that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, what, you, what you need uh, is, uh, you know, the, it's the soap that does it. So you just need to make sure that you've got enough light on your subject, uh, that it's wrapping around sufficiently enough. 
uh, and that you have um, that you've got your focus in the right place. Now I'm actually just going to turn this flash up a little bit because I personally think that this is a little bit dark. It could do with being a little bit brighter. Uh, and let's have a little look at that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now what you will notice is that the background is is getting a little bit. Uh, there's there's a little bit of light bouncing around in the background, um, and. <laughs> Mina, hello. It's almost like I predicted your uh, your question. Um, there's a little bit of light bouncing around off the background now, uh, and this is where if you have uh, if you've got some some proper blackout felt, uh, it makes life a little bit easier for you. Um, but with just a little bit of contrast control, background down a little bit. Right now, I want to make sure that I'm as central as I can, uh, and this bubble actually has a little bit more life to it than the last one. Uh, so we're actually going to get uh, some more interesting patterns. Uh, and so we can just keep shooting. And the more we're shooting, you'll notice that every single one is just a little bit different. The colors are, are changing, the patterns within it are changing. Um, uh, we're, we're getting like different bands of color uh, and and shape and form and, and every one as I say is unique. Now we could we could try coming in a, a little bit closer but I suspect we're about as close as we can get with this lens uh, so I may actually let's come, come back a bit. Now the advantage of coming back a little bit is obviously we give ourselves a little bit more depth of field to work with uh, because when we're further away from our subject we have uh, we have more depth of field, uh, so here we go. This is looking uh, a, a little bit better right now. Uh, okay. There we go. Right. So yes, as I said, minor. Uh, or it's almost like uh, I predicted your question. What determines the colours of the bubble? Uh, it's nothing you can control. Uh, is entirely down to the soap uh, and you just kind of watching and waiting uh, and um, I don't know sometimes I've had bubbles that are bright reds and purples and pinks and yellows uh, and other times they can be a little bit more subdued um, a bit like uh, a bit like these where you know they're, they're coming out as well they're pinks uh, we do have some we've got some greens on the top of the bubble um, but predominantly uh, we we've just got this kind of bands of pinks and greens uh, and that kind of there's that slight halo in the background which as I say I'm pretty convinced is the reflection of the of the bowl kicking back up or alternatively it could be the reflection of uh, of the bubbles around as well you'll often see that um, you can see uh, let's have a look see if we can bring that top band into focus a bit more uh, there we go. Okay, so that one actually, this this one where we've got the top a bit more in focus, you can definitely see the reflection of that bowl uh, in the undersurface of the bubble. Uh, but you'll notice that the edges are starting to drop off. That's because despite as big as this light source is, uh, as big as this light source is, we still have, um, we've still got the edges not quite falling into uh, into the bubble entirely. So I'm going to move the camera in a little bit more. I'm going to try and find that top of the bubble again, which I think is probably about here. Now this is where focusing rails can be really, really useful uh, because if you've got focusing rails, uh, it, it certainly helps uh, with micro adjustments of your, uh, of your lighting. Now, you've seen this with flash and flash usually, in my opinion, is the better way of doing it. Um, but today the bubbles aren't really giving us an awful lot of colour. Um, we're not getting a huge amount of colour from these bubbles. So what I'm going to do, um, let me, uh, I'm, 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 you're going to see me uncreate all of this. So I'm going to take this towel out of here. Um, we are going to put that to one side. We will need it again in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to take the flash out of here. So I need to raise it up uh, and just lift it up and out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to move to uh, uh, 
we're going to move to a continuous light source uh, and I'm going to try and show you why uh, why it needs to be very bright. Obviously, I mean, it, it should be fairly obvious why it needs to be bright. If we're going to shoot at 200th of a second uh, at f16, ISO 100, uh, then you clearly need to make sure that you've got, I'm just trying to maneuver this around here. There we go, that's better. Uh, okay, so now you can see the setup uh, a little more clearly. Right, uh, let me bring this this big light in here. So this is this is my continuous light source. Um, and as I say, it, it is fortunately nice and powerful. Um, and as I just, let me just bring this down. This is the hardest part of working in a small space is trying to juggle things around to make sure that they fit. Uh, there we go, right. So let's turn this over. Uh, and I am going to, uh, I'm, I'm actually just going to turn this onto its side. So let's release this one. I'm hoping you can all still see me so that you can see uh, exactly what I'm doing. Obviously the exposure's probably changed a little bit on that camera. Uh, there we go, let's, right. So I'm positioning this light so that it's facing straight down. Now obviously the advantage of this uh, is that I can then get it, hopefully, right over the top of my bubble. Uh, and I'll then be able to show you perhaps a little more in real time what this looks like. I just need to bring this in a little bit. There we go. And then I'll be happy. Right. Okay. Let's tighten this up. That would be not very good for this to fall over. I'm just going to move this back to give myself a little bit more space uh, to work in. Right, here we go. Now, hopefully you can see what we've got now is uh, we've got our light here. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to try and get it as much over the top of our bubble as I possibly can. Uh, and I'm going to try and get it as low as I possibly can. There we go. That's that. So, from this angle, what you can see, uh, I mean, you can already see that there, probably even in this angle, you can see that you've got, um, you've got a hot spot of light. Uh, but what I'm going to try and focus on, if I can get in nice and close, you should also be able to see uh, that there's some rainbow colours going on in this bubble. Now, I told you that bubbles, uh, usually when they're about to burst, they tend to stop moving a little bit. Um, you can just blow on them just gently blow on them and you'll see them start to swirl up as the soap starts to move around once more. Right, let's get our camera back in. Uh, we, we certainly don't need any flash anymore. Uh, and uh, I'm going to make sure that this time, where I said that I didn't want exposure simulation on, right now I do want exposure simulation on because uh, I want to see exactly what is happening uh, with, uh, with the exposure. Now, okay, so I need to get in a little bit closer because this is, um, this light source is quite a bit smaller. And this is where, this is why you need a macro lens because you're kind of working at what is effectively the minimum focus distance here of your, uh, of your lens to try and get in as close as you possibly can. Uh, right, let's have a little go at this. Uh, okay, let me show you this picture here. There we go. Now, so now we're getting, um, actually, I, I think the heat may have, uh, may have given us a little bit more. Obviously, in an ideal world, again, I would, uh, uh, I would want to um, make the background dark. But actually, as it sits right now, um, I've actually got quite a good background. Uh, because the light is really quite directional down now. Let's try and get myself a little bit squarer. What we've got right here is there's a this is kind of like an uneven shape uh, of light on the bubble, which is uh, which is frustrating. Right, where are we? There we go. Okay, now. When you're, when you're working with continuous light, obviously you're probably going to have to work with your, 
uh, shutter speed a little bit more. Uh, you see that actually I've probably it's probably it's proving easier to focus today with this uh, than it was uh, previously uh, on on flash because I've got a bit more of a an idea of what's going on. Now you can try using a nice slow shutter speed uh, to be a bit more creative to try and create something a little bit different. But shutter speed generally, if you want to create the um, uh, if you want to create the like the frozen pictures, obviously you've got to keep your shutter speed up. So ideally, something above 160th of a second uh, is going to work. So that might mean that you need to take your uh, it might mean that you need to take your um, ISO up to try and compensate. But as I said, you can do some slow shutter speed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my ISO down. So if I uh, let me see if I can give you this view here. You can see what my settings are again. Um, so my settings are right now, I've just taken my ISO down to 100. Uh, and I'm going to close my aperture down, give myself a bit more working distance um, or depth of field. And I'm going to open up the shutter a little bit more. Obviously, things are going to get brighter. Um, but what we're going to see, hopefully, is that you start to get not just frozen sharp pictures but as that bubble is moving you can start creating some interesting patterns as well now that's an 80th and I or 40th uh, and I still think it's maybe um, a little bit too fast uh, here we go let's come down a little bit more ah here we go now we're starting to get a little bit of a blur going in there so you're getting some kind of motion uh, yeah we do have a dark corner there actually that I just need to uh, I would need to just move the camera around a little bit. Uh, let's try that. Uh, but we're getting a little bit of motion in this bubble now. It's actually, um, it's actually kind of going quite fast. Now, it is actually about to pop, I think. It's starting to solidify around the top a little bit. Uh, you can see that you've got that kind of rainbow halo along the top. Um, I might be able to show you that here. If I focus back a little bit, uh, you'll see this rainbow halo uh, at the top. And that, as I say, is very static and usually means that the bubble is getting close to, uh, to popping. Um, although this one right now seems to, be, seems to be doing us proud. It seems to be lasting quite well. Uh, right, here we go. Okay. So I'm just going to change my exposure a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to go very fast on my uh, on my shutter speed uh, to try and get some more of those frozen pictures. Uh, and I'm just trying to come in and see if I can't avoid that dark corner because that dark corner down here you can see uh, is really uh, it's really upsetting me actually. Um, I'm sure it's probably upsetting you as well. Uh, so where are we? Somewhere about there. Now look at that. And as I said, it's very much like uh, it's very much like photographing uh, another world. We've got you know a whole other area of, of photography here. This looks entirely different. It looks like you're photographing the surface of the world uh, or surface of uh, of another world, maybe Saturn. Uh, and there are infinite possibilities with this. You can try bigger bubbles and smaller bubbles. Uh, you can try multiple bubbles. You could even try, if you had a fast enough shutter speed and some flash, you could try capturing the moment that the bubble bursts, uh, which is uh, can be quite challenging. Uh, that can be a fun challenge for one evening when you're, uh, when you're stuck at home and, and not sure what you're going to do. Um, you see, actually, this one, the colours are... This bubble's doing really well for us. I, I really thought it was going to go, but uh, it's, it's actually providing quite a bit of colour right now. Uh, and you can see all of the shapes as I just keep shooting, uh, just picture after picture, all of them are a little bit different. Oh, there we go. We've got that nice bit of a uh, corona across the top. I, I, I said nice corona, but you see that colour really start to kick in here. Now, if you want, if your camera's got some level of, uh, uh, if, if your camera's got some level of um, uh, in-camera processing control, uh, you can adjust that to maybe give yourself uh, a bit more saturation. Obviously, we're not photographing the natural world here. So if you wanted to, 
uh, if you wanted to change your, uh, your in-camera processing to add some saturation or indeed you wanted to do it on the computer afterwards, uh, then this is, a, this is a really good thing to do it with. Uh, it's going to give you that, uh, that kind of extra punch. Uh, so I'm just going to take my contrast up uh, and I'm going to take the saturation up uh, and let's have a look, see what we get. Oh, there we go, look at that. Now we're starting to let that background uh, go a little bit darker uh, because we've adjusted that, uh, that processing, the in-camera processing. Uh, I've managed to make the, the background a bit blacker. Uh, obviously the whites have got a bit whiter. We can turn the saturation right up. Uh, and now we've got this super saturated, um, really interesting looking scene. So you can see where you've got the top of that bubble. Um, you've got all of that, uh, that kind of the corona around the top, which is just giving us different color after different color. Um, there we go. Uh, and as I say, just a little bit more adjustment. If I just kind of rock this round a little bit, uh, I'm still trying to lose this slightly dark corner, but what we've got going on here is these bubbles that I have around the edge are just slightly deforming the shape of the bubble that we're trying to photograph. And I think that's creating, uh, let me just see what you can probably see here. Uh, I'm just trying to pop these bubbles here uh, there we go, without popping our main bubble, uh, hopefully. Uh, and just see if that's going to help improve that little dark corner, because that's, that's usually what it is. It's a shadow somewhere of the light not quite being in the right place, or something just... There we go, let's try that. Here we go. Right, let me give you that one. There you go. Now you're really starting to see... Uh, how this can uh, how this can create these incredibly interesting pictures. There we go. The colours are really starting to come in this now. Uh, this is uh, this is getting all quite lovely now. I'm just going to bring the camera back a little bit. I'm going to try and get a bit more into that band of colour in the foreground. Uh, and it's this. It's now just a question of watching uh, and waiting uh, and seeing how the colours of the bubble change. You see how having popped those little bubbles around the edge, we've lost that shadow uh, that we had. There we go. Uh, the bubble now has more of a, a, a bubble type shape. Now this is where, when, you've, when you're starting to get something that looks like this, uh, this is where you could start working with uh, your slower shutter speeds to try and create some more interesting Swirls, I guess it'd be a, a lot like painting. Um, you might want to go really quite slow on your, uh, on your shutter speed. Let's give this a go. So I come down to 100. Let's make our shutter speed. Uh, see what we can do. See how low we can go before it. There we go. Let's try that. It's a thirteenth of a second. Uh, and if I just blow in on the bubble a little bit. There we go. Now we start getting some interesting shapes and swirls and patterns uh, as this bubble moves around. Uh, and as you said, there you go, Miner, as you said, it looks otherworldly. It's like um, once you, you know, it takes a little bit of playing around, but once you get to a position where uh, you've got uh, a good setup, you can just sit here and create incredible picture after incredible picture. Uh, I mean, like, look at this, you can see here, look at that shape of three bubbles, the trident just kind of popping up while we've got that, uh, those bands of different color uh, around the top, and then all the, the weird shapes going on below. Um, here we go. There we go, look at that. So, obviously, um, you could also film this as well. So if you wanted to, uh, if you're using a continuous light, obviously it wouldn't work for um, uh, with with flash. But if you wanted to film this um, with uh, a continuous light, you can do exactly the same thing. Uh, and then you can create, you know, maybe a bit of slow motion, um, maybe some some high resolution stuff. Uh, you can create really interesting atmospheric video as well. Now, oh, here we go. Just all of a sudden, it's like. There's no rhyme or reason why all of a sudden it starts moving or why the colors suddenly appear. They just do. 
uh, you know, over time, as the bubble evolves, everything starts looking uh, a little bit different. So, uh, now, I mean, I, could, I would happily keep shooting this uh, all day long. I could do this for hours, taking pictures of, of this. Uh, let me see if I can give you uh, this view from here. So you've seen, you've seen the pictures, you've got a bit of a view of what's going on over here now. Um, <laughs> mine are aliens. It is, it is very alien, isn't it? You just, uh, you know, you're expecting aliens to just appear at any time uh, to pop out. Uh, there we go. Oh, swirls again, and you can start seeing other shapes and patterns. And no two pictures you take will ever be the same, uh, which is one of the things that I absolutely love about this. Uh, there we go. Right. Okay. So let's uh, let's have a little recap, shall we? Uh, let me see. Uh, so the camera that, that you had before, uh, I've I've moved all the lighting around. Uh, so that's uh, that's probably not going to work. Right. Uh, let me let me come in here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to maneuver this camera out of the way. Oh. It's perfect timing. Look at that. The bubble has literally, the bubble has burst. There we go. Right. Let me move this camera out of the way. Uh, and I'm going to come back in here. Uh, and I'm going to give you, hopefully, a quick recap. Now, firstly, you can indeed see, which you couldn't see before, but you're in my kitchen. Here's my pots and pans hanging on the wall. Um, I'm not really uh, a chef. But I do like cooking, but you know, you're in my kitchen. Uh, you've got my hallway down, down behind me. Uh, and yes, for those of you that have watched, uh, watched several of these, uh, I have managed to get my hair cut. Hallelujah. In fact, what I'm going to do is try and make this light a little bit better. If I turn this here, uh, excuse me while I just change the exposure for this one. Nope. Come down. Here we go. There we go. I might just be able to get myself some slightly better uh, exposure, slightly nicer lighting. Uh, there we go. Bit of, bit of side lighting. Uh, okay, so let's have a recap. We need to make, uh, we need to make our bubbles. Okay, so we need some, some washing up liquid, we need water, and we need some kind of binding agent. Uh, that being something like olive oil or vegetable oil, or if you can get it, glycerin. Um, you should be able to find that maybe in a chemist. Just mix the three of them together in a jar, give it a good shake, leave it to sit overnight. You then need a little bowl, and the little bowl is going to be where you're going to pour your mixture. You need a straw and you need a light source. And that light source, as you've seen, can be a continuous light source or it can be, uh, as you might be able to see behind me, the thing behind me here, a flash light source. But it needs to be quite large and it needs to be very bright. Now, this is possible to do out in daylight. You probably just need to take your ISO up a little bit higher to try and keep your shutter speed and your aperture down. If you're going to do that, remember you've still got to diffuse the light. So using just direct sun isn't gonna work because you're not gonna get a nice enough wrap. So you would need some kind of diffuser. Uh, so if you have a, a diffusing reflector that you can put over the top of your setup, uh, then you should be able to use the light from the sun on a nice bright sunny day, which obviously um, I'm in London I don't have very often, but uh, out in the UAE you have a lot more of. Uh, you have a lot more sun to play around with. So that, if you don't have any other lights, uh, that is going to be worth trying. Just get yourself a diffuser, uh, some kind of large diffusing panel, get it in nice and close. It will diffuse the light from the sun and hopefully create the wrap. Effectively, what you're looking for is the uh, it, it reflection of the light above that you're, you're trying to get. So you know it's all white, the light above, uh, and that's what's allowing the colors to come through by wrapping over the subject and creating a white surface rather than one with all of the reflections of everything else that's around coming in. So in terms of your settings, as I said, you're gonna close your aperture down to give yourself some depth of field. You are ideally gonna be working with macro lens because that's gonna allow you to get in close enough uh, to focus on just the section that's got that nice wrap to it. Uh, if you don't have a macro lens, then some extension tubes will also work. Try extension tubes on something like a, a 70 to 300 at the longer focal length. You should be able to get in close enough with the extension tube to focus, uh, and it will also give you the narrower field of view to help you concentrate again just on that little bit that you want to photograph. Um, make sure your lights are nice and bright. 
as I say, your shutter speed. Uh, you can play around with your shutter speed, take it up to try and get these sharp frozen images that I've shown you, but also you can take it down as well uh, to try and get some sense of motion and movement and a little bit of blur in there as well if you want to have a play around with some uh, something a little bit different. And then finally, just remember to try and cut out as much reflection as you can. That's partly getting the light source as close to your subject as you can, but also uh, some black material, some black cloth that you drape around the light uh, to try and stop any extraneous light from around the sides coming in. Uh, that's going to give you the best chance of success. And then it's just a question of, as you've seen, patience. We started off with the same fluid, but the bubbles weren't really that interesting. The lighting was basically the same, other than it was it was flash rather than continuous. But the 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 bubble them, bubble itself didn't have a lot of colour to it. Nothing particularly interesting was happening. And then patience and perseverance and, and just moving around tiny little changes uh, can make a big difference. So maybe if the bubble's a bit dull, get rid of the bubble, blow another one uh, until you start getting uh, some interesting shapes and some interesting otherworldly colours uh, to your bubble. And then once you're set, just keep shooting because as I said before, no two bubbles will ever be the same. Within, within a one second period, uh, you could create 10 entirely different bubble pictures because that bubble is constantly morphing and flowing uh, and, and the light is reflect, uh, refracting in different ways. It's effectively an interference pattern that you're photographing. It's the interference pattern of light, almost like it's going through a prism. The bubble is acting like a prism and splitting the light out into its different colours and that is what is, uh, that's what's causing that, uh, that well, the colour patterns and banding that you see in the bubbles. So there we go. That, uh, that is soap bubble photography. As I said, it's actually quite easy once you know uh, the few little tricks about lighting and a macro lens, uh, but it can be uh, enjoyably frustrating uh, to try and get it right. Uh, but it's a great way to spend a couple of hours. It creates some entirely different, um, unique pictures uh, that, uh, that will grace any wall uh, anywhere, uh, anywhere in the world as a, as a piece of beautiful art. Uh, so there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Apologies for the uh, slightly awkward start that we had. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. We just did not have a signal. Uh, and then I understand that I think something in the middle, it, it maybe slowed down a little bit. Um, I think the, the internet decided to go slow. Maybe all my neighbours came home and, and went online uh, and slowed the internet. Um, but I hope it didn't, uh, it didn't affect your enjoyment of this session. I will be back again next week with what I believe is the last in the series. Uh, and we are going to be doing smoke photography. So very much like today, it's a very simple technique, um, but uh, it can create some really interesting results. And we get the opportunity to maybe use um, flash in a slightly different way. And we can look at using some colored gels and simply trying to create some, some cool, funky, more artistic pictures rather than concentrating on, as we did last week with the, the macro flowers, uh, which is very straight photography. Uh, this is what I consider a little bit more artistic and uh, yeah, maybe, maybe fine arty or, or something a little bit more out there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please uh, fire more questions and comments and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, tell all your friends uh, that we've got, uh, we've got one more next week and they don't want to miss out. Uh, and I hope, uh, all being well, that I will get to see you in, uh, in the UAE sometime in the not very distant future. I'm hoping that we can all get back to traveling uh, and, and seeing each other uh, in, in each other's countries. In the meantime, please stay safe and well. Uh, keep shooting. Uh, keep, keep yourself sane by being creative. Try and come up with, with something new that you haven't photographed. And I look forward to seeing you all. Uh, again, very soon, definitely next week, um, if not before. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.